Hey everybody, this is Adam from AM Music. Today I want to talk about Logic Pro 11's stem splitter. This is obviously one of the big new features that's come to Logic Pro and I just want to explore some other avenues, some other uses. So obviously most people are going to use it for doing bootlegs, remixes, but there are other uses for it as well. So we're going to look at using it to remove drum bleed. We're going to look at using it to do sampling drum beats. We're going to have a look at it for restoring old projects, which is how Logic and Apple kind of suggest you use it. We're also going to look at it as a learning tool it's really helpful for kind of splitting out in the individual parts so you can either transpose them if you're like a guitarist or a pianist and you want to hear what's going on or if you just want to have a better understanding of kind of how songs are put together so let's just jump straight into it let's go so the first use of the stem splitter we are going to have a look at is the way that apple and logic suggests that it should be used which is to kind of dig out old recordings and enhance them if you want to go back and split the stems out and remix them whatever i've got an old track here of mine it's maybe seven years old or something by now um, singer songwriter indie rock kind of thing um, and let's say I wasn't happy with the level of the vocals for instance say I had it mixed and I didn't have the original files anymore I don't think I do have the original session files but let's say I wanted to remix it basically or just give it a modern uplift I might be like oh, okay well I wish I'd done the vocals a couple of decibels louder or I wish the guitars were a little bit louder that's really difficult to kind of isolate from like a remastering perspective but you with the stem splitter you can now go back in and get a little bit more control over certain elements so i've got the track here i'll just give it a little blast even both the door and cross the bed feelings i can't seem to leave this town no i can't seem to leave this town no. I'm using one of my own tracks because I don't want to get copyrighted by YouTube so the video won't get taken down. To use the stem splitter we go right click and I've just used it so it's up there but otherwise it's down under processing stem splitter and you get the choice of which uh, instruments you want to split it into vocals, drums, bass and other so let's split let's do all of them and then it takes kind of 30 seconds or so on a full track like this. Okay great and now you can see it kind of puts it into a new uh, track stack and it gives you the four individual stems, so four stereo stems. So you've got vocals, you've got drums, you've got bass and you've got other. Let's say my drums were too dry and I wanted them to be more reverberant. I mean, I think that's okay, but now you can isolate them. I could go, all right, well, I wish my drums had been a bit more boomy. So I go to reverb and add a space designer, let's say. Okay, so now I've got a lot more reverberant drums and let's say my vocals I wanted to be a bit louder. I'm gonna tell it straight. And I'm gonna maybe it will maybe then rather than push the vocals up because it's already kind of been mixed, maybe I just pull the drums down a decibel, maybe I pull the bass down a decibel, and maybe I bring the other stuff, which is mainly gonna be guitars or keyboard, maybe I bring that down a decibel as well. So and I'm gonna tell it straight. You got my mind in a sorry state. So now you've got louder vocals and you've got drums that are a lot more reverberant. So you can then bounce that out again and you've been able to update your old your old mixes basically because you no longer have the original project files. So that's really great. And that's the first thing that you can do with it. So let's move on to another one. Okay, so another use for it might be if you've been recording someone and you've been recording a session and say you've been recording a vocal and the cans, the headphones have been a little bit loud and you know how you sometimes get that drum bleed coming through. This is a good opportunity to use the stem splitter to clear up that vocal track. So let's listen to the track that I've got here. Longing for the coastline so got a vocal and if I isolate the vocal, let's go for that vocal main. Longing for the coastline every night. So you can hear quite a lot of the drums are spilling through from the headphones onto the microphone there. So what I could do, I mean, yes, I could use something like Isotope to clear this up, but what you could do now that you've got Stem Splitter is you could go to Stem Splitter and let's say we're just gonna take the vocals and the drums on this one and split them out. Okay, that's worked quite quickly because it's a small track. Now these two are what I've got. Long and that's both together you can hear the drums and now if I just do the vocal longing for the coastline every night drums are gone and now you've got a new vocal which doesn't have any drums spilling it 
There you go, completely clean, free of drums, vocal. So I think that's really helpful. So this can get rid of your spill forever. If you can, it does help to have headphones that keep the sound in rather than spill out too much. But if you ever get uh, some vocalists like stuff really loud in their ears and then that does get picked up by a microphone, particularly a condenser microphone, um, it's gonna pick up some of that sometimes. So this is a good hack to get around that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. The next use of the stem splitter is going to be what I think most people are gonna use it for, and that is for doing remixes, bootlegs, and taking vocals from popular tracks and then remixing them. So you have to be really careful that you're not gonna get, you're not gonna infringe on copyright here. Um, and that's why I think Logic tried to distance themselves that in their description of what the stem splitter was used for. Um, because yeah, loads of people will obviously do remixes and the labels aren't going to be happy. So unless you get the clearance, so that's what you should always do first. But if you are just going to put it up somewhere online, maybe play it out and nobody knows, wink, wink, kind of hush, hush. Um, then this is what you might do. You might find your track. So I've got my American girl track. I'm gonna tell it straight. Say you really love that vocal. I don't know why you would, because I'm an awful singer, but there you go. We've split it out with the stem splitter as shown in other examples. And now I've got the vocal. Emma, I'm gonna tell it straight. Say you really wanted to do something new with that. Um, I don't know what my BPM is here. I've got, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, got some drums. Let's have a look at what the BPM is. So let's go metering. Let's go to BPM counter, stereo. About 90, 85, okay. 85 so that would quite nicely double up to 170 which would be drum and bass territory so 170 let's go um and then if i bring in some breaks so i don't want the drums anymore i just want to use this vocal for something let's say i want to do like a rolly kind of drum and bass if i go to break uh do 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 so i'm just using some uh, loop packs for this just to save time here. I do prefer to make my own breaks, but don't always do that. Okay, so I'm going to just time stretch it a tiny bit. So it's 170. Okay, so I've got a little little roller. I then want to bring the vocal in. Let's have that starting at the start. Not going to re it or anything right now, but I could do. Emma, I'm gonna tell it straight. You got my mind in a sorry state. Okay, so that's kind of in time. I just need like some sort of. Um, could I do the guitar? Okay, so it starts there ish. Let's go a bit tighter. So you got that. My time stretch this too. I'm just doing this really quick and kind of ropey just so just so I can show you basically. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of the phrase. Do that. And let's be quite drastic. So we got, let's double time it. Okay, cool. And let's put that all together. Well, oh, not all together. Vocals and drums. And then we could put some bass in if we wanted, but. I'm gonna tell it straight. You got my mind in a sorry state. Let's not talk about, let's not talk about, let's not talk about leaving. So yeah, you'd obviously need to put some bass line in there. You get the idea. You can take the vocal and you can then remix it basically. Um, and that is what I think a lot of you will do with Logic Pro's stem splitter. Another use of stem splitter is to sample something. So say we've got my tune open here, an old one, and we open up the drums. Say I heard this beat and I was like, oh, I really want to use this beat in my song. You can use the stem splitter, open it up and... theory you could take that beat and then use it for your own productions i mean obviously there are some artifacts here like there's a kind of phasiness going on and a little bit of pumping um but all in all that's a pretty decent drum kit maybe you just want to chop certain elements of it drum fills let's say you might like that drum fill So you might like that drum fill, for instance, and think, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to take that. Whereas you wouldn't be able to get at it without taking the guitars if you were going to take it from the, 
from the whole thing. It'd have all that kind of guitars over the top of it. So the stem splitter allows you to sample stuff, particularly drum beats, really easily. So that's another use that you can use the stem splitter for. Another reason to use Logic Pro's stem splitter would be to learn more about a particular track. So it could be that you're a guitarist and you want to learn how to play the song on guitar. So this is a really good way to just isolate the, say, guitars, and then you can figure out how to play it. So if we go to the stem splitter, okay, so you have to go right click, go down to processing and go to stem splitter. And I'm just gonna cut everything out. If I wanted to take the guitar, as we suggested, and learn how to play the guitar, I can just solo the other. <laughs> So it's so much easier to hear what's going on without all the other stuff. Even both the door and cross the bed. So that's an easy, really easy way to work out how to play it on guitar by isolating the track that you need. So that's another use for it. And also, if you just want to generally learn about a particular song you love, when you first begin to produce music, you don't quite know how songs are put together. So having being able to split a song into four tracks and see, oh, okay, so this is what the drums are doing, great. <laughs> And you can hear the parts and then the vocals. Let's not talk about, let's not talk about. And then you've got the bass. Once you can isolate it, you can really hear what's being played and that makes it so much easier for transposition purposes and figuring out how you want to play it. So it's really good as a learning tool for figuring out how songs are made up. Okay, so that was five uses for the stem splitter. I love this feature. I think it's really great. There are a few cons to it, I think. Few things that you have to be aware of if you're going to use it. So one, there is a slight degradation of the signal and that I believe is because of the phase cancellation that's happening to kind of detach the elements from each other. So, so there is a slight reduction in the quality but it's quite marginal and I think you can get away with it in most cases like most people aren't going to pick up on it second thing to be aware of is I think the bass doesn't come out that well like the, the other track the vocals and the drums all sound pretty good but the bass for me particularly gets quite lumpy quite lo-fi and quite distorted in places so be wary of using the bass is something I would say um, and the third final caveat with it is got to be aware that you are potentially going to run into copyright issues so just be careful Careful if you are going to release a tune and you have used someone else's samples, please make sure you get permission for them first. Or if you are going to use them, put them somewhere where you can't earn any money off them. Do it as a kind of parody, if you like, um, and be careful what you sample. Maybe if you take the drums, you'll probably be fine. But if you're taking like huge melodies, like the leads from something, the vocals from something, just be aware you are opening yourself up to liability there. So, but yeah, have fun with it. I think it's a great tool. I really love it. And, uh, See you on the next video. Take care. Bye.